Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Google Cloud Next 2018. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's live coverage here in Moscone South in San Francisco, California for Google Next. 2018, I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We're here with live coverage for three days. TheCube.net is where all the action's at, siliconangle.com for all the top stories and breaking news. Our next guest is Jeff Moncrief, consulting systems engineer of cloud security, a stealth watch cloud with Cisco. Um, really kind of cutting edge technology around how to bring network intelligence into the application, into the cloud. We covered this at Cisco Live in, uh, in Orlando and previously in Barcelona. Jeff, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, glad to be here. So Stealth Watch Cloud, I kind of gave it a little bit of an intro, I didn't really do justice, but I think this is the kind of future we're looking at. It Using is. Using data yeah. and intelligence, abstracting away complexities, yet not compromising <laughs> the benefit of the network. Take a minute to explain Stealth Watch, super important product, and, and how it's doing. Take a minute to explain yeah, Stealth sure. Watch. Yeah, so, sure, so Stealth Watch Cloud, what it does is, it aggregates network telemetry from your on-prem networks, your public cloud environments, particularly Google Cloud Platform. Um, and what it does is it brings in all this telemetry and it really gives you visibility into every one of your endpoints or your assets. Uh, assets that you may know about, assets that you may not know about. And it normalizes all of that data and it does baselining and anomaly detection. So it's essentially a security analytics platform that can also perform network operations, uh, traffic visibility use cases. And there's a lot that we can do with the telemetry that we're gathering. You're familiar with NetFlow, yep. I assume? Yep. Right. So NetFlow is typically our primary data source for on-prem networks, for StealthWatch from a traditional standpoint. As we move to the public cloud, uh, the, the NetFlow need is still there, all right? And that's where we get into VPC flow logs, and that's our primary source of telemetry in the public cloud also. What are the limitations? Dave and I, Dave has probably got some, a lot of questions because he's been talking about stovepipes for years. You got network guys, you got the security guys, you got your IT team, you know, classic stovepiping of IT. But telemetry needs instrumentation. It so does. one of the things that's interesting, and I want to ask you and put, put you on the spot is, what's the instrumentation requirements for the environment and or the customers to have access to StealthWatch because essentially what you're doing is essentially giving a full line, horizontally scalable observation space to network data, yeah. which then be, can be used with you know, high powered compute and AI operations to bring some analysis and potentially prescriptive right. analytics. So it's very easy to spin up. Um, it is uh, our presence, our primary presence is in the public cloud for StealthWatch Cloud and it's about a five minute integration process into your Google Cloud Platform or other cloud platforms that you may be leveraging right now, and it's about an hour process to spin up on site to get full visibility into all of these internal endpoints and assets. Yeah. And one thing that I do want to call out is that we're not necessarily just talking about IP addresses and operating systems these days anymore. That used to be what we talked a lot about, right? Is I need visibility into my hardware servers, right? Then it became I need visibility into my virtual machines, my virtual environments. Well, if you've heard anything on the buzz on the floor this week, it's been all about Kubernetes, right? Yeah. And so we work really well also with Kubernetes, uh, which is one of our unique differentiators because we can give you visibility into all of those assets, including your containerized environment that most organizations really, they've never had visibility into before. Well, I find that interesting. One thing, we've had great conversations with Susie Wee, who's um, doing the DevNet and DevNet Create, who's the kind of cloud native. And you're starting to see um, the same concepts of what Cisco is doing in the network layer, moving up the stack. Right. So you're starting to see dynamic provisioning of services, like app services. Istio certainly is the, is the new thing shipping. This has got to be done in real time. It, that's so a, this is kind of interesting. So it's, it's like network-like, but it's not necessarily network traffic. It's, it's connections and right. services. Well also, you know, I mentioned, I mentioned like virtual operating systems and IP addresses, okay? As we move to the public cloud, we have to think beyond that. We have to think about things that are virtual distributed applications, okay? So your virtual database instances, your virtual storage instances, all of these things are containerized. They don't necessarily have an IP address, but they're interacting with your VPCs. So you need visibility into what those are doing also. And that's something that StealthWatch Cloud can also help you with. Right, so you're given that visibility, what the, the, you don't know what you don't know, or, or you know what you don't know, you're given visibility right. to that. What's the customer conversation like, Jeff, with regard to, do you ever get 
oh no, now I have more stuff to manage because right. I'm drowning. I don't know what to prioritize. I can't respond fast enough. What's that conversation like and, and are you attacking that problem in any way? We, we do, so that, that's a great point. So whenever we effectively go in and do an evaluation with StealthWatch Cloud, you know, I, I, I like to use the word illuminate. Okay, we illuminate or turn the floodlights on on everything inside their, their environment, whether it's in the cloud or on premise. And inevitably, we're going to find things that they wish they hadn't seen. A lot of cockroaches scrambling yes, in the yes. floor. Yes, and you know, they'll have that moment, if you will, <laughs> where they, maybe they wish we hadn't have turned the floodlights it's on. It's an awakening, not an yeah. enlightenment. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's almost like shooting fish in a barrel. It, it really is. I mean, we can almost always find something. It's not necessarily always a breach. It's not always an indicator of compromise but we can always find a policy violation, a segmentation violation, a things like that. Things that they just, they had no idea about because they didn't have the visibility into what was actually going there, going on in there. But as far as scalability goes, it's beautiful, especially if we talk about the public cloud because it's a five minute back-end API integration. It doesn't matter if you have one VPC or 1,000 VPCs, you know, 10 VMs or 10,000 VMs, it's instant visibility into all of them. So talk, talk about the impact, I and mean, obviously this sounds super easy to use, uh, you guys have been successful with it, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to put um, um, devil's advocate uh, out there around, I'm a CIO or I'm uh, an executive at a large company and my team wants to do a lot of IOT. Sure. With a service area, it certainly increases, um, certainly a use case everyone's trying to do too. This seems like a natural fit for IOT. Talk about how this would be used for an IOT deployment so a lot of times a lot of work's being done on the architecture side around you know, laying out the network with devices and or uh, instrumenting them. Is it just plug and play, same kind of concept? How's this impact that? Something very unique about using your network as a giant security sensor grid, because that's essentially what you're doing with StealthWatch Cloud. Uh, we're not relying on uh, firewall information, we're not relying on agent or endpoint telemetry. Uh, we really don't care, to be honest with you. Um, if the device, IoT, can touch the network, we're going to know about it. Yeah. And, and that's a beautiful thing because I've got story after story that I can tell you about uh, IOT type devices that I have. Well tell one, so give, give an example. Okay, um, how about a, uh, a cafeteria vending machine that I found one time at a university on the west coast that had uh, bi-directional communication with pretty much every bad actor country you can imagine. Um, I deployed StealthWatch, StealthWatch caught it immediately and we asked the IT staff, what is this cafeteria vending machine doing on, on the network, and they said, well, we didn't know it was on the network. And it was mining said, Bitcoin too while well, I was at it, who knows even, what it was doing. Even better, <laughs> even better. So uh, I said, well did you know it's talking you know, over remote desktop to every suspicious country, country in the world, and they said, we certainly didn't know that. They went a step further and they told me that it was actually a dirty tray vending machine that was designed for loss prevention, so that students did not throw away or steal the trays, right? So it would spit out a coin, it's almost like the Aldi system, right? It would spit out a coin, and the, that's where you would get a clean tray, right? You return the, put a coin back in, and that's how you continue doing that over and over for loss prevention, right? And I said, well, did you realize that it was uh, you know, running Windows? And they said, we didn't know that either. Yeah. Uh, these are all kinds of things that we can expose. And then expose. light bulbs or have IP addresses and full, fully threaded applications, right. full and processors. I, I, I found slot machines, uh, x-ray machines, uh, HVAC controllers, things that uh, customers had no idea that were on their network, uh, that StealthWatch is e able to very, very quickly explain. So this is an insurance policy for one, but I love what you said. It's that the network is a security, what'd you say, a security? It's a giant sensor grid. It's a giant sensor grid for security opportunities and also kind of understanding where the holes are. Right. So talk about the role of data, how that role is changing in the context of security, how you're leveraging data to make organizations more secure. Yeah, so what we're doing with, with the data that we're getting, all right, because network telemetry in itself all right, is very valuable. I mean, we've been using NetFlow for 20 years now, the top talkers conversation, you know. But what we do with that data is very special. That's really where our secret sauce comes into play. We do uh, baselining and anomaly detection for every one of those assets, whether known or unknown or IOT like we talked about. And we look for indicators of compromise that might indicate uh, malware, a breach, an APT that's in that customer's network, but it's very important because we're leveraging that giant data warehouse, if you will, and we're crunching those numbers and we're making sense of it. And that's really where our secret sauce comes into play because we're automating this security analytics solution so the customer really doesn't have to invest much time. All right, the tool's designed to crunch those numbers. It has very high efficacy 
and it's designed to alert you when there could be a situation that you need to take a look at. And you're, you know, Cisco obviously an unbelievable position to, to play that role. John and I were at a conference last week, uh, the, C, the, the CIO of the CIA said, something to the effect of, the cloud on its worst day has better security than my client server systems will ever have. Now, that's nice and it may be true, the problem is I can't put all my data into the cloud. Right. So ergo, you guys are solving a real problem there. Right, we're aggregating everything into a single pane of glass and it is true that the cloud in general is more secure. Um, I, a term I like to, to use is a second line of defense. This is a checks and balances system because inevitably there will be something that goes wrong with your, your security posture at your perimeter, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, a tool like this will catch those violations. Yeah, and that's a great thing, is also the perimeter is also leaking a bit too, as, it, as cloud is horizontally scalable. Jeff, I want to get your thoughts, just kind of step back. Within Cisco, we've seen a cultural shift going on within the company. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we saw Diane Green on stage at Cisco Live in Orlando, right. Cisco's um, biggest show of the year. Um, Cisco's announcement here around um, partnering on the cloud services platform. That's a huge coup for Google. It is. You guys have great uh, beachhead within the enterprise, huge sales force, great discipline, tons of experience, and a great culture. But the net, the DevOps movement has come full circle to, to you guys. It has. Network ops is now a new thing. Network DevOps, where you guys are now network as, network as code, not just infrastructure. That's right. Specifically networking. And StealthWatch, I think, points to some of that greatness that's going on where speed, visibility, awakening and enlightenment, <laughs> insights, all these things are going on where you're pushing it up for the developers without a lot of capabilities. That, that's true. How is that going on internally? Is there, is there the haves and have nots? Is there a culture of the old Cisco? Is there, what's the vibe? What's the culture? What's the, do people get it? Are people like saying, hey, this is rocking and rolling? I would fully, I would say that we have fully embraced the, what I would call the containerization era. Uh, and we are, we're full speed ahead there. Um, and pretty much every one of our business units are uh, you know, leveraging or looking to leverage containerization in some capacity. Um, Stealthwatch Cloud specifically. Uh, you know, we have to think about you know, Kubernetes again. Yeah. Uh, we're here at, at the Google Next conference. Kubernetes is, it will be the de facto container yeah. orchestra orchestration mechanism moving forward. Um, I, if, if folks don't realize that now, they soon will. And then and Kubernetes certainly shows that you guys are aware of some of the, the coolness, but also relevance at, and security at, at, the, at that level, but also what Istio shows is that as you get services that can be programmable, right. <laughs> it looks a lot like network services, up the stack. That's right. All that's happening, oh great. Well we are very impressed, we covered the DevNet teams, we see the traction in the Cisco ecosystem, looking at coding, the cloud native movement, you guys are on it, congratulations. Thank you. And thanks for coming on theCUBE, sharing. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Okay, here's Cisco inside theCUBE. DevOps is going mainstream, obviously it's been going for a while, but certainly now, network intelligence driving into the cloud. It's a symbiotic relationship, it's what's going on in the cloud. This is the new normal in infrastructure, it's new normal in application development. It's theCUBE, we're bringing you all the coverage live here in Moscone in San Francisco. Stay with us for more after this short break.